Hi fellow Rundeckers, today we're going to take a real quick look at what might arguably be one of the most popular features of Rundeck Enterprise, and that is clustering, especially for high availability in Rundeck. Now depending upon the license, this is a set of two or more servers that work together against a common database to provide robust usability for Rundeck users. Now, there's also some other elements that need to be shared as well, such as execution log storage and some other elements. To really get the most out of clustering though, there are a few related settings that must be configured on each server. And remember, whether you're a brand new Rundeck Enterprise user or one that's already inside of our ecosystem, our customer success managers and our support team are here to help you with any of this. So let's take a review of what the Rundeck architecture looks like. Obviously, we'll have some Rundeck servers. I'm gonna put three in my cluster for now. And then out in front of them, of course, are the three common ways you can access Rundeck. That's with the CLI, the API, and with the web interface. Important to remember here that all three of these methods are not only equally as powerful, they're also equally secure and then the Rundeck servers are behind a load balancer so that you can wind up using the clustering configuration that's built into Rundeck. From there, Rundeck's connecting to all of the nodes. Remember, those are places that your automation can run against across your entire environment. Of course, we're probably going to be federating up against something like LDAP or Active Directory. And then there are those shared services, the relational database that you're using inside of your environment, some shared storage for your logs, and some resource models that might be shared amongst all of your servers inside of Rundeck Enterprise. A point of note here is that Rundeck Enterprise's clustering capabilities are something that is built into Rundeck Enterprise. You don't need any special plugins, any different software, or some dedicated server to make it work. This logic exists on each and every single one of the servers inside of the clusters. Let's talk about job ownership. Scheduled jobs are always owned by the single Rundeck server cluster member. So the default job owner is the cluster member where the schedule was first created. So if you were logged into server one, when you first set the schedule for job A, job A's scheduled runs will happen on server one. Now this behavior can be overridden in the cluster manager then one-off jobs are jobs that are run at a single point in time rather than being on a schedule. And they're also owned by a single Rundeck cluster member. By default, the owner is the cluster member that was used to connect to when that job run was initiated. Again, if you're logged into server number one and you went and ad hoc ran job A, that run would happen on server number one and as you can probably imagine, this default behavior can be overridden by the cluster remote execution policies. A heartbeat is a setting used with all Rundeck servers to measure whether another server is still alive and able to execute jobs. Now the results of a heartbeat check can be used to determine logically whether a particular server can be depended upon by other settings or processes such as remote execution or auto takeover policies. Taking a look at the cluster remote execution configuration policy, these are policy settings that indicate what method of assignment will be used for particular jobs in a policy. The sum of the valid ones are none, which is taking the default policy, they'll execute locally. You can also do random, which does what it sounds like, it executes randomly among allowed members. Round Robin does a round robin sequence. Presets allows you to define a secondary cluster member to execute that job on. And Load allows jobs to be executed on Rundeck cluster members based upon load inside of the cluster. And if you have an extremely busy Rundeck deployment, this can come in very, very Another handy. concept to consider with cluster remote execution configurations is member tags. Now, tags are used to restrict which cluster members could be assigned to run a remote execution. Now, tags aren't the only way to define cluster members that could receive jobs, but they are the most flexible and are very commonly used. So tags are used to assign individual servers 
by being added in each framework.properties file as you desire. So for example, an allowed tag allows any machines that could have a job assigned to them as part of this policy. A preferred tag indicates machines that should be given job executions by preference as part of this policy. Preferred machines should be a subset of your allowed machines. If your policy has both allowed and preferred machines, allowed tags would usually only receive the job if there are no preferred and allowed tagged machines available. Another thing to consider is a list of allowed members. So in this instance, rather than using tags, you can define allowed members statically. If used in conjunction with tags, the tag servers would be used by preference. Here's an example of that setting. The allowed values here are self, which allows it to execute locally, other, which allows you to execute anywhere other than locally. You can also specify a UUID and Rundeck allows you to put a regular expression inside of this properties file. I'd like to take a moment to talk about an oft asked about feature inside the cluster remote execution configuration, and that is load balanced policy. So when a remote execution configuration policy is set to load, jobs will be assigned to servers based upon statistics that are calculated through the heartbeat process. Load is calculated based on thread ratio and percentage of CPU for each member of the Rundeck cluster. This setting identifies which criteria will be used to compute load for this policy. If you look above, you'll see that we've defined relative computational value of the criteria. Our example is showing that load is weighted at 50% more than thread ratio. Cluster members are sorted by weighted load and then placed into groups. Each group has a weight and the policy randomly chooses a group based on the proportional weight of that group. A group member is then chosen randomly and used to execute the job in the Rundeck cluster. This setting defines four groups each with 25% of the available members. Right now, the weight is defined as 100% chance of using group one. We've got a lot more configuration examples that I can show you in the documentation linked below. One final concept I'd like to give you a brief look at for this video is from the auto takeover policy. This is great for high availability, and it's set up so that if a cluster member goes down, an auto takeover policy helps move scheduled jobs to another cluster member. Auto takeover uses heartbeat settings to determine whether a machine is alive or not for purposes of triggering auto takeover inside the Rundeck cluster. For non-scheduled job, auto takeover can kick in now in Rundeck Enterprise version 3.2 allowing non-finished jobs to pick up where they left off in another cluster member if that setting is enabled inside of a job. Here's an example of an auto takeover configuration. Whew, we've covered a lot in the last oh, six minutes and I didn't even get a chance to go very, very deep, but that's okay. The idea was to at least give you some high level concepts and at least inspire you about what you're able to do inside of a run deck cluster. Like I said at the beginning, we've got a great support team and a customer success team here to help make you a better and more effective run decker. So please reach out to us, uh, check out some of the links below and please subscribe to this YouTube channel. We'll try to make all sorts of valuable content here available on a regular basis. Thanks for joining us.